Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Here until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, I was just talking with Lori before we uh, started this gathering here. Lori Thompson, you see her name under her picture. Uh, and uh, she says she has ennui. Yeah. And, you know, I learned that word from you. Uh, I mean, you used you, it you in know, I don't, if you ask me for a definition of ennui, I couldn't tell you. It's just that indescribable sad feeling. It's yes. kind of like Molly, yes. but a little more ambiguous. Well, it's one of those words that it's just a word to describe something which you can't describe. Exactly. Yeah. That's why. But when you used it, and I finally it was like you know kaching, um, I learned exactly what it meant. I thought, title to my memoir, I may not write. You yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. So so you have ennui. And you, don't I know do. what, and you don't know what it's about. I don't. I mean, we just got back. From, like this is this sounds like so bitching about nothing. Um, but we just got back from this beautiful Mediterranean cruise. I have a good spouse. Um, I live in a fun place. Um, I and I had good parents. I kind of miss them. And Mother's Day is coming up, and my mother's birthday is on Mother's Day. Yeah. And you know, I just regret every time I acted without kindness. You what? And I regret everything, every instance in which I acted without kindness. And that's all flooding me right now. Really? Yeah. Why now? You know, like I said, the Mother's Day thing. And, um, it, I don't you know, know I mean, it, you can. What you should do is say, I used to be a piece of shit, but I'm not anymore. <laughs> Okay, will that drown out the voices? <laughs> well, that'll drown out the voices, yeah. No, I mean, I know what you're feeling. I know you're, you know, you're uh, uh, you're bouncing around, I think. You know, and like I say, I have a good spouse. We have a lovely home. Well, I'm we saying you're, you're bound, your picture's bouncing around. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, just, I'll anchor. It, it's it, it apparently somewhere where you're tapping your foot or something. I don't know. Maybe it's uh, mirroring my own <laughs> Marrying your ennui. No, you know, I mean, we were, I was, a, I, I have things in my life that I, where I was terrible, you know, but that's all part of going through life, you know, when you're younger, especially, I think you're probably the biggest asshole when you're younger, you know. You mean like 20s or 30s uh -huh. or 20s I, or 30s? Yeah, 20s, 30s, 40s. Hell, I mean. I don't know. I mean, how was I? I see. I have no remembrance. Was I an asshole? I don't think you were. You you got sad very easily, and but I learned this. Thing. I mean, it's about acceptance. You know, it's just like this is a person I care about. We have this fun show we do, yeah. and it's about rolling with flow. But was I pretty decent to the people around me? Oh, well, I think so. Oh, okay, because see, I don't yeah. remember. I don't know how I. I have no idea how I was perceived. You know? Yeah, well, you were kind of a superstar coming into things. You know, you were you were the guy, yeah. and so we were all a little. Um, what's the word I want to say? Enamored of you, and uh, but then you know, that goes away really fast, yeah. and you learn to relate to someone as a person, and that's where the fun starts. Yeah, and and you grow as we both grow as a person. Well, my relationship to you, I think, was different than anybody else on the staff. It was. It you was know, because it was a much closer was, relationship. I think so. Yeah, because we we saw each other at our best and worst, and uh, you know when you are and when I, you, you were away, you had some bad times, and I went through them with you. I saw you through them. You, you know. did. You did, and I appreciated that so much, so much. You know. Yeah, I mean, bad times, quote, are just a part of life, and that's what I've learned to accept in others, 
and I've learned to accept it myself. Yeah. And if oh you, man! If you came call to, Hallmark. If you came to work for me, chances are, unless you really screwed up badly, you had a job for as long as I had a job. Well, it was so fun because I was, you know, I had only been in radio about five years, and they said we're going to put you with this big shot because you've been a you were a big shot in New York. And uh, then you were a big shot in San Francisco at the Quake. And uh, I thought, okay, I'm just going to do my best Look every day. Look what's happened to the big shot, though. Oh, the big shot's here. I have to I have to deal with the big shot, but not as the big shot. I have to see him as a person. You have to see him as an old fart. Shut up. That's what you were. No, you were, I think, 44. And I was 26. Maybe. When Some, he, something like when, that, yeah. Yeah, and um, I thought this is a guy who has, first of all, carved a very successful career in radio, which I admired, mm -hmm. and I thought just relate to him as a person, and uh, also respect the fact that he is very experienced in radio. Well, the reason you got the job was they came to me and they said, well, you know, we have a woman doing the news in the morning. <laughs> Uh, we got this trick. Yeah, and if if you don't want her, we can get somebody else or somebody of your choosing. And I said, well, my old news person, it was Joe Rogelski over at the, the, the Quake and at Live 105, at uh, the Camel. Yeah. Um, we're all, uh, well, he, he, was, he couldn't do it because of contractual problems, okay? And uh, I just said, look, I don't want to put anybody out of work. But let her do the news. If she's good, I'll keep her. You know. And that was, I mean, that was such a gracious gesture, and and I appreciated it as such. And it was like, well, just see what see what this show needs, and do whatever you can. Well, to you make know, I, I never ever. I mean, this is, a, this is a, don't take this the wrong way, but <laughs> I, no, I never ever cared about who was doing my news or working opposite me or working with me because my feeling was I could mold them to my act. Exactly. That's all. And I was, you know, relatively young. I mean, 26. You were, pretty, you were pliable and you molded very nicely. Well, yeah. thank you. That is a compliment because I, I like to uh, think that that is one of my strengths. Mm -hmm. You know, I can kind of flow, go with the flow and yeah. appreciate the person I'm working with and see what I can do to compliment. Mm -hmm. That's compliment with an E. Yeah. So, and you, you became, you, you folded right in. I mean, it got to a point where, and the same thing happened to me with my producer in New York City, Albert Reynoso. Sometimes you're working with somebody and that person is so linked into you that you, you know what the next, you knew the next thing I was gonna do automatically. Yeah, because you knew me that, was that so well, fun. and you then played to that. Yes, you know, so that's what made you a great uh, side. I hate to use the term sidekick, because but I know what you mean. Yeah, and that's to me that was the joy. Man. That was the joy because you were, you you were more than a to me you were more than a sidekick. You know, you were somebody I talked to every morning. Yes, know? I mean, and you said something about uh, Gracie Allen and George Burns, and we kind of. I knew what you had grown up inspired by, yeah. and so I looked those things up, and I thought, what are the elements of this that make it fun? And I tried yeah. to I tried to deliver those elements and give it my own spin. Yeah, but I mean, it worked. It, it absolutely worked. I mean, I have people still come up to me who just love what we did. You know, I had somebody on a cruise come up to me, and and you know, within like two sentences. We established that you know I had lived in the Bay Area and that they had listened to the show, and it was just so fun to have that connection with a person, and it was just joyous. Yeah, but they remembered you after all these years. Yeah, they remembered us. They remembered and had us. Gone and, and, they, alive, they, the didn't they didn't recognize you immediately because we were not on radio. by face, by voice. Yeah. yeah, because we were on radio. Yeah, you know. Which gave us nice anonymity. Yeah, well, that's the great thing about radio. You, you know, it is. Uh, I, I had a, somebody once said, "You have a face for radio, Alex." 
<laughs> well, I mean, which is kind of a compliment in a way, yeah, compliment yeah. with an eye. Yeah, because uh, it just it means you're delivering your essence. I, and I think that is the core of personality. Well, you can deliver. You know, the one thing that I did that, that I think made my show different than other shows is most of the people who were doing radio or coming into radio at that time were, were younger than I was. I was, as you say, 44 at that time. You were, you were seasoned, but not in an old way. Yeah, but what happened was I was raised on radio. Mm -hmm. In other words, when I grew up, when I was a kid, there wasn't a TV set in my bedroom. There was a radio. Yeah. And I used to listen to the radio. And I, the thing I loved about radio was that I would hear all these people and I would imagine what they looked like. I would you could build it. I would imagine the surroundings they were in. So uh -huh. you, you could, on radio, create any amount of surroundings that you wanted to. You made your own movie. You made your own movie. But they were pictures of the mind. And so this is how I approached radio when I did a show in the morning. People, I, people were listening to it. They weren't seeing it. Yes. And therefore, uh, I had to present it in a different way than I would if they were watching it. Yeah, and you were ever conscious of that, and yeah. that was really cool. Yeah. I know because, and you, one important thing you taught me was never dumb down, and so that way we could imagine ourselves, I mean, as the listener, you know, driving in to a job, a blue collar job from Hayward or yeah. a CEO, and that was, and but that still, uh, they, they had to, every morning when they were listening to you. It subconsciously in their mind they were trying to figure out what you were wearing that morning or, <laughs> you know is that the, just with women the room in which you were in and they even imagine what you looked like you know but, and i still have dreams about members of our studio audience remember uh really? tan man yeah i can remember them and wonder like a uh, sandwich Larry's um, sandwich. Or, we call him yeah. that because he went out and bought sandwiches Larry, for everybody every morning. Larry Sandwich. But he was an undiscovered gem. Yeah. I had mentioned casually on the air once that I like those blue fish that come in a tiny aquarium that you buy when you're six. Yeah. And he got me one for my birthday. Uh, and I had mentioned it, you know, eons earlier. And I just, yeah, I still, and uh, Dr. You, Miller. You know, I, I just remembered when we were at the old building. Which is oh, now, gosh. which is <laughs> now Elon Musk's headquarters. I know, man. Talk about gentrification. Yeah, but anyway, uh, we, uh, I went out and I bought some sea monkeys. You, you know what? Do you remember what oh, sea monkeys? For are? sure, sea I remember. Sea monkeys were really what they were. They were brine shrimp, and and they could dry them, and if you put them in water, they would come back to life. Reconstitute. Okay. So they would sell them in a little packet, sea monkeys, watch them play, and they had pictures on the front of the, the box of them throwing around volleyballs and things. Each other's like species. That. Oh, they're just going to play and they're going to have fun, and you're going to have fun with your sea monkeys. So I bought some sea monkeys, and we put them in this tank that I got, and, and the sea monkeys started to come to life. Well, we had a producer by the name of Christy Frazier at the time. It was her name then since changed many times yeah um, well a few <laughs> huh? yeah uh, and and she um <laughs> she, she just loved these sea monkeys she, she became fed, attached she, she she fed them every night she made sure they were taken care of you know we left them on a little shelf in the studio <laughs> or not in the studio but in the office okay we, in an open area in an open yeah. area May and, have even given them names. And every day, uh, Christy would come on and tell us how the sea monkeys were doing, you know, and she was always very fond. She really was, I, do you remember? She was just absolutely bonded to these sea yes. monkeys. Yes, yes. They just blind <laughs> shrimp for crying out loud, you know? I know, but it was kind of sweet. <laughs> it was very sweet. One morning, she comes in, and all her brine shrimp are dead. Floaters. Like in the East River. Yeah. Do you, remember what happened? do you remember what happened? Well, I do remember. It was our night man who was a very talented guy. Had some issues. What was, now, his, uh, what was his name? He was George Fryer. He went by Flip Fryer and he was a yeah. big success at KML. And then I went to his funeral. Yeah. And uh, 
good guy, but also had a really distorted other side. Yeah. Well, and uh, uh, tell, I wish I was. Tell yeah. Them, anyway, tell, 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 the that, audience, my, tell the audience <laughs> what happened. Yeah. To the sea they, he was a big smoker, and the sea monkeys were relatively like within six feet of the studio. They were in another area, but he <laughs> would put his cigarettes out in the sea monkeys. I, now, now, that's not what I heard. Killed them though. What killed them? He peed in the in the tank. That doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> One night God he was just soul. pissed at the sea monkeys or whatever, and he peed in the tank. And the next morning, when Christy came in, they were all dead. Yeah, and she was heartbroken. She was. It was like a, it was, was in, like a, an aunt had died. And I figured I could go get more sea monkeys. You know, the, what a dollar for a bag of them or something. You right. Know? <laughs> but that wouldn't satisfy her because these were the ones she loved. These were the sea monkeys, yeah. not any sea monkeys. Yeah. That was a major but, thing on our show, was the death yeah. of the sea monkeys. Well, because it was kind of like a soap opera with sea monkeys. And she, yeah, she's still one of my best friends. Yeah. And uh, just a lovely person who had a life that I might have lived, but uh, didn't. Went to the big city. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. But is everything else going okay with you? Yeah. Yeah. I can't complain. You know, I mean, I've got, I've got the leukemia. I know the leukemia is such a drag. I, I got so a touch of the leukemia. <laughs> the only thing bad about having leukemia, I mean, it isn't really affecting me, you know. Yeah. And I just went to see my doctor two days ago for a checkup after mm -hmm. two months because he wanted to take more blood tests. And he took more blood tests, and some things are up and some things are down. That's the way it goes. He says, you know, he says, we're, you know, your uh, your uh, white blood count is is up and i went wow how bad is it he says it's eighteen thousand. i said when do you start worrying he's <laughs> at two hundred thousand. <laughs> oh see so you got yeah. some leeway yeah, so yeah. You, so he says, something you're to not work really with. showing any major symptoms you know he asked me you know am i getting night sweats and i went i sweat at night but it's not drenching and you know, I give him the whole litany of what, what's happening with me. And he says, you sound like there's no change in your symptoms. He says, as long as you don't have symptoms, you're good to go. He says, come back in two, three months. Yeah. See, and all's said, good. Are you ever going to get to six months? And he said, eventually, <laughs> he said, but first I want to get a, 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 what you, a reading. A, yeah, a balance on you, see where, where things are going. But, I, you know, I, I've, it's basically, it's a leukemia you don't die of, you die you don't die from, you die of. No, with. wait a minute. You don't die of, you die, you with. die f with. That's it. The operative prep. <laughs> but, you know, that's about it. I mean, I'm tired a lot. That could be a little bit of the leukemia. I don't know. But he said, uh, you know, chances are, you, you, this is, you know, you, you could go symptomless for the rest of your life. You know? Yeah. And well, we, and we just think. bring you in and check on it every six months or so. And you live in a bitching neighborhood. Um, I just watched but, but the documentary. I'm is, what I was going to say is that's the pain in the ass about having this leukemia. Is I have to go in and see the doctor every six see, months. That's what I don't want my old age to be. Appointments, appointments, appointments. Marjorie, like Marjorie. I, if I went over and looked at her calendar right now, it's like doctor this, doctor that, doctor this, doctor that. She's got one doctor for this. She's one, one doctor for her right leg, one doctor for her left leg. I mean, you know... I mean, and to paraphrase Marlon Brando, the horror. The I mean, horror well, there's a point at which I say to myself, what am I just going to say? Fuck it. If I'm going to die, I'm going to die. See, I've kind of reached that point. I don't even want to know what from. Yeah, you, I don't care. You know? I don't care. Because, I mean, I have. I think the introspection part of that is that each day you think, what can I do today to have been kind to my fellow human beings, my loved ones? Um, you know the people I care about, and uh, leave with a good conscience. And that's and like if it happened today, I wouldn't mind. Well, you know, but I'm, I'm not going to encourage. I'm, af it. I'm afraid of dying. I've got this whole. Yeah. Come on, you, then, you're, you're a Christian. You know, you believe in that God thing, and you know. No, that is not a part of my concept of death, though. Yeah. Really? I just I feel like. I mean, you don't feel like when you die, you're going to go see your mother. No, not necessarily. If she wants, you know, if she wants to, 
but I feel like there's <laughs> <Yeah>. just wonderful, <laughs> sublime. I mean, there's she's on the door, you know, she's on the guest list. But um, there's a great hereafter of which I've only contributed to my in my best moments, and that's what I'm going to be a part of, you know. And Ben, you've done some wonderful, lovely things. Think about how many were driving to work, you know, in the '80s and '90s in the Bay Area, and you know, we gave them something. We gave them, well, we gave them entertainment. There's no question about it. To feel good about yeah. something to feel good about. Yeah. You know, something to encourage their day. Yeah, but that doesn't take care of me in the afterlife. I mean, what it does. What goes on after this? And the, my answer is, well, uh, to begin with, I don't believe in God. Uh, you know, you although I, I think God is a myth, okay? It, it, it's an explanation for things that man can't explain to himself. Okay, this myth yeah. you described, what is he to you? I mean, is he a being? Is he an entity? Well, somebody he, once said to me, what if you go to heaven and it turns out there really is a God and you haven't believed in him in all these years? And I go, well, then if he's the God you're talking about, he'll forgive me. Exactly. <laughs> you know? They're just, just go, I They're understand. I'll, I understand why you didn't believe in me. It's a little hard to believe, you know, that I'm up here on this cloud with these little puppet <laughs> strings uh, handling See, billions of people. What? That's a mankind uh, assignment of God. It's something that I had a dream once. I was really, really conflicted. And this was when I was 13 ish. And I had been indoctrinated in the Assembly of God Church. Mm. And I had a dream. That's and it heavy said, duty. That's heavy duty. It's very heavy duty. Yeah. And I was just struggling with all these things and, and thinking about adulthood. And it's just like, it's something you'll understand when you get to that point. And when you think about it, did you know you were going to fall in love with Marjorie that first time? You're assuming I fell in love with her. No, I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> oh, you're cold. Yeah. No, I, mean, uh, uh, no I, didn't, I never saw Marjorie coming. No. I figured no. I was going to be spending the rest of my life kind of trying to date maybe, you know, and that's it. You know, yeah. I'm very fortunate that I found somebody at this point in my life. Yeah, because that's or at what that you point want. in my life, it's been like almost twenty years now. You know. Well, and think about all your passions. That's what your heaven will be—an infinite amount of time to exercise your passion. Well, that's boring. I want things to go boom, 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 boom. Oh, yeah. Maybe then that will your- maybe the fact that we can die is what makes life worth living. I think you're right. I mean, if we didn't die. Our, our whole existence would be different. We'd have diff- a different approach to everything. Uh, pe- I think people would be blowing their heads off. I think they'd, be kill- they'd kill themselves rather than let themselves, you know. Well, because- I've often uh, theorized that ego and ambition are, are killers. Well, I was, I, was, I was saying this to Bubbles yesterday. Huh? And it's funny, I should have this discussion two times in a row. But I I was saying to him that uh, uh, I have a theory that when you die, see the part that bothers me about dying is that the world goes on without me, okay? And things are going to happen and I'm never going to see how they resolve themselves and blah, 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 blah. Okay, that being the case, I suddenly realized one day, maybe when I die, the whole world dies with me. That is plausible. Because there is no world anymore. That the right. world that I perceive of existing exists because I'm alive to see it. J.P. Sartre was right. Once, no. I, yeah, once I'm gone, you're all you're all toast, folks. Goodbye. Yeah, I think that I really do think, and this sounds so hallmark. It's the love and the genuineness that we have displayed with our with articulation and our whole heart is what will survive. Yeah, well, I, I say to all the younger people out there, don't worry if you're a prick right now. Because <laughs> as you get older, you'll stop being a prick, hopefully. Because I think I'm a much, much better person now than I've ever been. Right. You know, I'm much more tolerant. I'm much more forgiving. I'm, I'm much more uh, um, whatever. I'm a lot of things that I wasn't when I was younger. When I was younger, I, I, I could be a piece of work. Oh, we all can. You know? Yeah, but in Pentecost, they teach you that today is the day of salvation. 
you don't need to wait until your 40s. Do your you salvation can, now. Yeah. Yeah, well, that, I then where, where do I sign up for being a Pentecostal? I, you know, I, there, actually, there's no, I've never signed a membership card. Oh, okay. Uh, you just have to say today is the day of salvation. Yeah, yeah. And it is. But, uh, it you, is. you know, you shouldn't join any religion where you're going to go to hell. That's what I'm saying. You know? I've never, like I said, I've never become a member. Yeah. My yeah. God is yeah. my... In fact, I don't refer to God as God anymore. I refer to it as gracious, omniscient design. I refer to him as my pal. Anyway, listen, <laughs> we got to go. We got to go. We okay. run out of time. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, that's her. That's Lori Thompson. Thank you, Lori. See you next week. I will week. see you. Bye. Bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Lori Thompson. Nice to have you here today. And uh, we'll uh, we'll see you again next week, right? Because we recorded another one, all right? Okay. Anyway, uh, so hello, everybody. Here it is. It's, mu- it's uh, Wednesday. Uh, nobody has called yet except for one person who's waiting. Uh, I just, you know, I'm... If this keeps going on like this, maybe I'm just going to do away with the shows, uh, except maybe I'll do a Friday show or something like that, and then everybody will appreciate me. But they don't appreciate me when I'm, you know, like now, because they take me for granted. And uh, it's, you know, but we do, now we have two people. Okay, wait a minute, let me see here. Who are they? Okay, uh, good. we got some good people here. Let me just... Uh, Shall I uh, shall I bring them in here? Where do we go? Okay, how do I bring them all in? All right, here's how we do it, and we go there. There. Mm. Okay, and then I go admit all. Okay, I see. I'm, somehow, I, if I don't do this for a couple of days, I forget how to do it. Anyway, hello, Alan. Hello, Charlie. Okay, we got Alan and Charlie. I wonder if anybody else will call. Do you, do you think anybody else will call? Yes. Yeah. It's early. It's only a couple minutes into the show. So look what Charlene made up for me and sent me today. I get gifts. Charlene from- Martinez? Yes. Right. You ready? Okay. There we go. <laughs> That's great. You ought to sell those. Well, this is, I would have to like get the logo and everything like that going. You know, this is a little, this is not quite a final version of what I would do with it, you know, yep. so. No, you'd probably straighten it out. It's, it's <laughs> bent in like this, you know. What, what do you mean it's bent? Push the, push, push in the inside the cap so it looks even straight across. Straight across. No, it's not. That's right. just a hat. It's got a little dent in the cap. It's got a I'm dent in it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I should probably get a, you know, let me see here. Okay, yeah. It just says Gab. That's very nice. Thank you, Charlene. I appreciate it. You know. Mm-hmm. Right now. Uh, like, oh, here we it, go. You know. What, what do you mean it's bent? Push the push push in the inside the cap so it looks even straight across. That's just the hat. It's got a little bent in the cap. That's not a good sign. Pam, we need your technical help. Hey, Pam. Pam. (laughs) Okay, well, anyway. I think he's got it. I think he does have it, actually. (laughs) Are you there? Can you hear us okay? Can you hear us okay, uh, uh, Jeff? Oh, no, see, he can't even hear oh, us now. Can you hear us, Jeff? Yep. Oh, okay. And you got the you got rid of it. I did. Good for you. Joke. Good for you. Let me. Mm. I feel like I have to turn on the air conditioner here. Hold on a second. There. Is it going? Okay. There we go. Okay. I have it low, so it isn't going to make noise here. Anyway, hello. How is everybody? Doing okay. Hey, I just had my doctor's appointment. I'm doing great. No, that right. doesn't work, Charlene, because you've got the thing locked, is what <laughs> your problem is. 
Uh-oh. Why don't we spend the whole hour solving technical problems? <laughs> no, no, no. Can you hear me? Because I'll hear try you. to do it again. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, but you Okay, have to I'm going to try to get out and come back in. Okay. Okay. Well, Let me see if I can get out. <laughs> fine. Oh, I'm all right? Yeah. No, no, yeah. no. Just, don't, no. just don't turn sideways. No. Oh, okay. I thought that's what you meant. Okay. Now, since you uh, mentioned me, I know I, I didn't do it right. Like the N is supposed to be capital or something, right? Well, usually I, I so do. Much... Usually I do G A B N in capitals, and then E T right. is in. And I <laughs> fucked it up. Sorry. Well, yeah, yeah. I meant well. <laughs> well no, uh, no, it's fine. You know, I'm very, yeah. very I'm going to wear it out and everything like that. You know. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad will... you finally got it because everybody... I had to have Amazon send it to me. And then I sent it to you because when I try to put it in and everything, I don't know, it didn't get to you somehow. I don't know. Really? Oh, well. Yeah, when I uh, try to ship it to them. Yeah, well, the hell was, what the hell with Amazon? They never get things right anyway. Right. So I, I got credit. I got them to reimburse me for the first one. Yeah, I probably should get a situation where I can put the logo on there or something, you know. So. Yeah. yeah. Now, can I say something real fast? You know Ooh. how you had that faster, tear duct faster. surgery? Faster. Faster. I know, I know. Faster. I'm sorry. I'm trying Faster. to go fast. No, you had the tear duct surgery? Did no, they pull no, like a big fishing no, no, line no, out of your eye no, no, wait a minute. when I, they did I, yours? I didn't have that wasn't what I had. You, I didn't have that. Oh, now. okay. Yeah, oh, that's right. Well was, anyway, that's what happened to me today, and then I'll shut up. Like um they took this big piece of, and I said to the okay, guy, Thank everybody, God this is going to feel me. this is going to feel real good. OK, go ahead. It, it, it was like two feet of fishing line came out of my tear duct. It was crazy. He pulled out this big thing. I said that was in there. And some other lady said to me, yeah, how did he get it in there? I said, you know, I was so crazy. I forgot to ask him. I wonder wait, wait, how wait, the hell wait, he got wait, it wait, in wait, there. Wait, wait. Let's start from the beginning on this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, please. Some of us just got on. Yeah, I, I don't get it. You you what you he put fishing line in there? Well, he calls it a um uh, like a stent, and I wanted yeah. to know what kind of stent did he put. I thought it was in my nose because he had to go through my nose to unblock my tear duct, and that's all he does. Well, I never had any. I surgeon. never had anything like that. Yeah, yeah. I got confused because you know he, I did he, do the I lids. How, how do, do the lids look? Doctor <laughs> wanted to do something to my my tear duct. Do, do I look on river? Nobody's listening to me. <laughs> Nobody's listening to me. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. No, I I, I had a doctor want to do something to my tear duct to kind of open it up, but it's not that. It was another little thing where he had to do a little surgery. So, mm -hmm. But I didn't mm -hmm. want it because it, it was going to take too long to heal. And I just, you know, I, I, I don't mind the tearing. It's not that terrible, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So, so that was the waiting people, room, and I'm sorry. Have, you have dry eyes, Charlene? Oh, yeah, they're, like, really bad. And, Very and that, bad. They put little plugs in your tear duct. He did that, but that, I think, is what plugged it up. Plugs. So. Then he tried to tell me it was out, and I let him say it because he was a man, and he was telling me, but I knew he was wrong. So I had to go back again because I didn't want to upset the doctor. And he went back, and he finally took it out, but oh, I, he didn't get God, it out. Oh, dear God, is this discussion block. ever going to stop? I know. I'm sorry. It's Alan's <laughs> fault. Can we, can, we, can we talk about Trump? Well, can we talk or, about or electric Stormy? cars again or something? Tell me all the bad stuff Stormy did that she wasn't behaving herself and the judge couldn't control her because I want to see the live footage now. No, she, she, she wasn't. He wasn't admonishing no, her. No, he it was very was, like uh, uh, bad words. Oh, gee, and I can't get a word in. Edgewise. Sorry, you ask sorry. me a question. You want an answer? <laughs> I'm shutting Alan, up. Alan, did you send her coffee? <laughs> Now all we need is uh, is Tony. Tony. Yeah, any second now. Maybe Tony Charlene and, and Tony could have a show. I'm doing coffee and I don't do that. Yeah, anymore. when you go on vacation. No, star, he didn't admonish. The only thing he admonished her about was in the beginning. She was talking very fast because she was nervous. And he said, calm down and slow down a little bit. And then a little bit later she described something. He said, don't do that. Okay, and that was about it. She wasn't admonishing him. As a matter of fact, everything I read, she was in pretty. She did very well yesterday. You know, she comported People herself like her very nicely. You know, mm -hmm. so I think big news today is Marjorie Taylor Greene. Yeah, what did she, do? she she tried to kick out the Speaker of the House, okay. and most of the Republicans and some of the Democrats stopped it. Yeah, so so he she she got. 
it literally thumped finally. Yep. Absolutely. It's about you know that ain't gonna shut her up though. You realize that. Oh well. You? you know. So you know uh, it, 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 that, that was um that was a, a minor thing today. We knew that was gonna happen because the Democrats had decided that they would do whatever they could to keep uh, what's his name still in in office. Yeah, if, they, if they kept yeah. if they kicked the speaker out, we get nothing done the rest of the yeah, year. Yeah, nothing could come to the floor. Well, I mean, I think that because the Democrats are willing to help, there's a little more cooperation now between the Republicans and the Democrats, which is kind yeah. of a nice thing. And hopefully, politics. Huh? Politics is we help you, you help us. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So. Anyway, by the way, my tear duct's bothering me. Wait a minute, let me go get some fishing line. Maybe uh, yeah. yeah. I have to get the put in your nose first. Yeah. So and for the eye. I what have you got your hand up again? I'm sorry, but one more thing. Oh. Okay. I I looked into it. RFK Jr. has a worm that was eating his brain and all that stuff. That's crazy, right? Because he's going to be like a third-party candidate, and they're already trying to do like an Eagleton number on him, right? Say that his brain is eaten by a worm, so, you know, don't vote for... for I, I heard that. Where did I hear that earlier today? I heard that earlier today from... Uh, oh, I was talking to Amy, and she talked about it, that there was this yeah. worm eating JFK's brain. Is, is that right? J, RFK Jr.'s brain? Yeah, I looked it up, and, and he says that he went to the same doctor his uncle went to, and he had a dark spot, and they thought it was like brain cancer, like Ted Kennedy. Mm -hmm. And it turned out that there was a worm in there. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, How does a worm be... get in your brain? I know. I thought my mother told me she's 90-something. I was like, what the hell? I had to Google it and look it up because I didn't know what she was talking about. She said he ate the worm. I said, what? I said, Probably ate the meat or something. Yeah. It's from. Oh, is that what it was? Oh, wait, a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Just shut up and you get an answer here. Uh, Kevin. They say it's from uncooked pork. That's that's why we Jews don't eat pork. That's right. You except don't get for, brain except, worms. Well, except but, for me. But, I eat pork like crazy, but that, I cook it. <laughs> Make sure it's Better go cooked. get a brain check. Well, you see, what happens, uh, 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 you got to remember, the Jews don't eat pork because it was a uh, 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 literally a, a, a health thing. All the kosher laws were health laws. And you died if you broke the, those laws because in those days, for instance, uncooked pork had trichinosis and trichinosis could go into your brain and kill you, all right? So uh, uh, apparently, uh, you know, the Kennedys are not Jewish, so they're, they're probably all, all got worms in their brain. They said it happens to several thousand people a year. Really, yeah. really. And they, and they all seem to be Republicans who voted for Trump. So, yeah, yeah. How you so doing? There's, an, there's another common way, and that's and this is not gross. People do nasal rinse for allergies, and if you use tap water, and the tap <clears> water, the worm, the worm can get into your into your brain through your nasal cavity. So, who knows? This is disgusting. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, yes. Oh, Talk about tapeworms now. <laughs> Tony, why am I looking so white tonight? I've got to do something about that. I've got to ask you a question. Would you know anybody who's a good nose doctor? I'm thinking about getting... Oh, boy. What, what <laughs> I is heard this you say call me on the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was on the couch laughing when you said, what is he calling? I had to run off. Anybody know a proctologist? <laughs> I figured I got close Shit, from a run. motorcycle. I mean, I'm going to get rid of the run nose. Here. There we go. I just got, the, uh, I got my color right. There we go. Took me a while, but I did. I don't it. go in an Austin, but mm -hmm. that's all. Oh, really? I'm going to cut it down a little bit. I don't want nothing crazy. So, what did you say was wrong with you, Tony? Oh, let, me, let me. I was thinking about getting a nose job because I got the cancer from my mother's side of the family and the bad nose from my father. So, I figured, you know, maybe a little nip and tuck. I don't know. What, Jesus, what do you need a doing? nose job for? You? I'm only joking because Charlene. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to him? Oh, that's perfect. Perfect. Oh. Yeah. So, why, so why do you want to get a nose job? So you'll get more dates? No, it's just I was just trying to break your chops a little bit because you were like, oh, where is this show going? <laughs> I'm yeah. trying to get a laugh at you, I guess. I guess. Well, I went to the oh, doctor maybe. the other day. See? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, for my leukemia. Oh, how'd you make out with that, Alex? I was gonna. Well, I'm gonna be dead a okay? week from Sunday. No, uh, it. it what uh, time? What time? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll let you know if it's early enough. Maybe you can come over and say goodbye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shoot uh, on out there. Anyway, I uh, no, I no, I just saw you know they, what happened was after they found out I had the leukemia, a touch of the leukemia, uh, they uh, uh, said, "Well, come back in two months. You know, we'll give you, we'll check you up again, uh, out again." And so I went back for my two month, and they checked me out, and they said, "Come back in three months." That's the horrible thing about getting this disease because this is CLL. It's a form of leukemia, and it's uh, it's not very. It's it's if you don't have symptoms, they don't do anything. Okay, not That's, very aggressive is the it's word. Not ag ag not aggressive at all. Mm -hmm. You die. They say you die with it, not from it. Okay, so anyway, so but I found out the thing that is so terrible about this particular form of leukemia is having to go to the doctor every three months. So now you're going to go to him and your urologist then every six months. Right? I have no, no, I, know, I, don't I have to see every three months. Oh, really? Well, I don't have it. No, I don't. I see my urologist but once a year now. Oh, that's good. Okay. Yeah. No. I, you know, the first couple of times was like three months, six months, and then a year. So now it's every year. But uh, it's just that I, you know, I having to go over to the... the I had to go over there, and here you are. You're at Mount Sinai, one of the major mm. hospitals in the country, and you're going there to go get your blood drawn so they can check on you for your two-month whatever, okay? We get there. They're running behind. Why? Because they're running a new computer system, a new computer program. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, why did, couldn't you take care of this over the weekend and figure it out and get it all up and running? Oh, we're having troubles. We're running about an hour behind. So we were there. We were there for two hours. Oh, and, you know, why if why I'm didn't going, you help them? They, my well, if, 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 if I'm going in for my test, yeah. fine. But <laughs> let's get it over and done with in an hour or so, right? And this time, the woman, the woman stuck a needle in my arm. Bruising? No, no bruising at all. Well, see, I'm good too. How you? So you got good veins, then, Alex, too? No, I don't. I get bruised oh, really? all the time. She just did a great job of oh, it. Oh, okay. So you got a good nurse. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know. They told me I got good veins, so they I don't even look. Well, when good. Do it. At least you got something that's good. I got something going for me. <laughs> I don't look when they do it. I, I get I squint. I can't stand this. This is the most bizarre evening I've ever had on this show. I, figured, I was laughing on the couch. I had to run off. I was watching the Nick game. Anyway. Um, so, I always ask for the same nurse when I go in to get my blood drawn. I think I got the, maybe I got the same. No, I got a different one this time. Do you actually get a nurse or do you get a phlebotomist? Um, I, well, I don't know. She didn't I, I, I get a nurse, basically. Hmm. You know, she draws blood, hmm. among other things. She hmm. fluffs it your pillow. She, she draws blood. She fluffs Probably your pillow. Both. You know. She usually gets me over here. Where what? Uh, no, she goes from this arm. No, when I do it, does it bother you, Alex? That I don't like watching the needle go, and I can't do it. Well, then like, don't I, watch it. I know, and I look I away. Don't. She says, "Think of something else." I'm capping. I think of something else when you got a needle. In. I don't mind the needle. Getting <laughs> I kind of squeeze my hand like like they tell I, me. I, I, I so far now I'm used to being a pin cushion for the doctors. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Every time I go, I go into my urologist. I need to get my blood drawn. I need going yeah, for me. my uh, you, you, this thing. Get blood drawn, you know. Everything I need to get my blood drawn. So, what the hell? Every three months. Either that, or they're shoving stuff in me, like <clears throat> in you know injections, and uh, I won't mention other stuff because it's oh, not pleasant. Your yeah. last proctologist wants his Timex back. <laughs> it just keeps on ticking. That's a watch up the butt joke. Folks. <laughs> <laughs> we we can't get enough of those, Alan. You know, Alex, funny you said the urologist. Every time I go in there now, funny remember, said they, the you said it to start no, with. No, but remember when you said, how do they do that job, like seeing people's asses every day? They got to get paid good money for that. Yeah. They do get I mean, paid good money. Well, they I do, know, but because you imagine doctors, looking at my dirty doctors, ass. Doctors, doctors, going, I'm actually, doctors, doctors, doctors. I'm clean as a whistle oh, down Jesus there. Come on. Christ. Did you have coffee tonight? 
<laughs> I actually did. I was watching the Nick game. I was yelling at the TV. We were losing guys left and right. I know. Folks, I know you think this is a comedy bit we worked <laughs> See, up it here, and it, it's not. It's, this is for it's real. Not, it's not an act. <laughs> anyway, where was yeah. I? Oh, I don't know. I forgot now. See, you made me forget where I was. I'm oh, sorry. Well, now I'm just going to be silent, not say anything. Take my I'm in low die. Uh, take my lead. I'm in low die. You're in low die. That's my job. <laughs> You're in low die. Yeah, <laughs> doing a project this week, so stuck in low die. So do, oh, so you in a hotel room? Where, where, where do they put you up in a hotel room? Yeah, yeah hotel. You, why don't they just get some kind of rooms at the place where you work so that uh, they, they don't have to pay for hotels all the time? I don't know. You nice know? hotel room. Do, do you bring your wife with you? I don't have a wife. He doesn't have a wife. A wife. Do you bring your wife to be with you? Uh -oh, they, what they, happened? They haven't been talking about getting married. In particular. Have you been talking uh -oh. about getting married? <laughs> apparently, <laughs> I can't hear the low die. The connection. Apparently, 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 my brother, what's going on? That's I, like you, I, Alex. I brought, up, I brought up a sore subject. I imagine <laughs> the internet's really bad, very choppy. I can't, I can't hear you. Hear. I think Alex said, "Are you going to pop the question?" <laughs> We're being joined by. Hey, Steve. speaking of pop the question, look at Steve Fox is here. Steve Fox. Oh, Steve. Steve, have you picked oh. the wrong night to call? <laughs> I got a headache. <laughs> yeah. Gonna get worse. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, how you doing, Steve? I'm doing well. Yeah. How about you? Fine. Steve's the voice of uh, of of Gabnet now. I haven't. I ha I keep saying I'm gonna make up some new ads, and I haven't done it yet. I just I'm too lazy. Uh oh. But uh, we did some new ones. I did something that was really wrong. And I, I, I had you do one of them for the new, you know, new, the 10th year. Mm. Right. And one says, and now in its 10th year, it's GabNet, talk like you've never heard it before, whatever. Okay. And the other one I had to make was said, uh, uh, starting a new era. And I oh, actually that's... had it wrong. I should have said decade. Starting a new decade? Yeah, because yeah. an era is like a giant plot of of time you know that that delineates from a previous period you know like there's the plasticine era and then oh, there's okay. the you know whatever era so i had to go back and change them all to 10. i had to change i had to change it to 10. what nothing i said do you think anybody actually listens to it <laughs> listens yeah. to what we all hear it every time we get on you know, now in the ninth season, now in the tenth season, I think it's great. Hopefully, we're around for the twentieth. Yeah, yeah. Well, you probably will be. I won't be, but you will be. You never, you never know. We can do it. I tell you what. What happened today? When Marjorie yeah. and I, uh, my business manager turned me over to a business guy here in New York to handle our money, because there's now a large amount of it where there wasn't such a large amount before. And we put it in a bank account. And uh, you know, don't ever leave your money in a bank account. I did a bank account. I had a, I have a bank account, and I checked to see what the interest was they oh, gave me. Cry. And I I'm had this was before I put in the big check, right? <laughs> now, I had thirty-three thousand dollars in the in the in the savings account. And uh, I checked to see how much money they paid in uh, interest on mm -hmm. that 33,000. Now, that's money they've, you know, got to use. They can use some of that themselves for stuff, right? So they should be paying me a bit of interest on that. How much money do you think I got? Oh, I'm good at this. A dollar 50 a month. 33 yeah, cents. What? I would say quarterly. What? Wait a minute. 33 uh, cents. Kevin is the closest. It was 29 mm -hmm. cents. Good. God, you gotta learn how to manage your money with banks nowadays. The the what interest on CD? checking is ridiculous. It's like point zero one or something. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're yeah. lucky. And I well, I yeah. once went out. I said, okay, well let's let's get this into one of those accounts, money market accounts, where you keep whatever. And I I was making three dollars a month. I mean, <laughs> and on more money than this at that time. Uh, wow. So we got this guy now. 
uh, because we don't want to keep our money in the bank. We want it spread all over the place and doing stuff for us and also at a place where we can get the money if we need it. You, want to you know, if all of a sudden I want, you know, $10,000, I can just say to this guy, get me $10,000 and he gets it from one of the places we have money, earning money for us. So we're taking most uh, a good amount of that money out of our bank account and putting what it What type in. of an account did you get? Well, one's going into Fidelity, which I can run just like a bank account. I can take money out. According to him, if I call his assistant, uh, she can have, if I want 10,000 bucks, she can have 10,000 bucks in my account within I, two I hours. I have Fidelity and I just get two online hours. and do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's one thing. But the other thing <laughs> is we're also going for federal, you know, bonds and things like that and uh, also another thing as well so we're spreading it all over the place and places where i can get it immediately other places he says, all of this you can get it when you need it but uh it'd be better if it just stayed where it was you know the federal bonds would do very well if you can keep it in there for three years and i said i don't know if i'm gonna live three years you know and he said well don't count on the fact that you maybe you probably are you and then you're going to be happy to see that interest, that money, when it uh, when it matures. So, and that if you need it, we can just stop that immediately. So, uh, but I just had to get it out of a bank. I mean, they're just you ridiculous. And then you go to that bank and you get a loan from them, and they charge you seven eight percent. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That's how they make money. Yeah. I mean, it makes no sense to me at all. I mean, my uh, grandmother used to have CDs. I don't know what the CDs give anymore. They used to have twelve-month CDs, I think. I think she I had Tommy the by the hoop. You're lucky to get four percent on a CD right now. But that's still not. That's still better than the bank, though. Though it's safe. Yeah, that's better than thirty-three cents a month. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to lose money with it. Either. This guy was really good. I mean, we had a good talk yeah. with him, and he that's said, good. "Look, he said, you know, the fact yeah. is, you just can't leave your money in the bank." That's that's you know we're going to leave enough of it in there that you're going to be happy to go out and spend it and everything else, but you you know you should take as much of the money as you can and get it out of that bank, because yeah. the mm -hmm. bank is about the worst place to have your money. And you would think that banks, if they wanted to do business mm -hmm. with the public, and mm -hmm. do good business with the public, would create mm -hmm. a situation in which you know. Uh, All greedy, uh, greedy, greedy, well, greedy. Well, greedy or not, you know, they'll make more money if they if they offer some programs. I mean, why aren't they offering the same program that, say, a Fidelity is? Okay. Yeah. In the know. wrong bank. Huh? No, I'm not in the bank wrong bank. I'm, I'm in Bank of America. It's one of That's the major a big banks bank in America. America. Yeah. What? Yeah, well, I have, a, I have a regional bank here that takes me out to find dinners with a bunch of other important mm. people i'm not important but i have enough money in the bank that they take me to invite me to golf games i don't go because it's golf you know but i've been told i've been told mm. that uh, you could do pretty good by putting all your money in a credit union mm. that you do get, you get more interest on it and so on and so yeah. forth you know uh but not much but yeah. Well, this, you know, the reason I went to this guy and he was mm -hmm. suggested by my business manager and he's kind of doing it as a favor to us uh, is because I am just lousy. I don't know anything about money. I never care about money. You know, that's why I've never been particularly wealthy because I, I spend it all, you know, and if I were smarter, I would have done something like this earlier. Alex, were you working? Did you have like a money manager that would take care of that for you? Like I, I had a business manager, but first you got to be able to save enough money okay. in order to go out and do stuff like that. And I did have I did have money in Vanguard and and Fidelity and so on, and a couple hundred thousand dollars there, you know. Mm -hmm. So and if we never got this money I got, we would still be able to live a fairly good life for the rest of our life, you know. <clears throat> so. Because between Marjorie and I, we get our, I get my pension from AFTRA, and I have my uh, Social Security. Marjorie has her Social Security, and then she has rent from this uh, apart, uh, uh, good, yeah. apartment that she rents out. You know, so, I mean, we could have lived nicely for the rest of our lives. Boy, the McDonald's know. around the corner would see a lot of you. <clears throat> no, I love no. I, you know, I mean, come on, McDonald's is getting just as expensive as... I know. Can you see oh, what the yeah. prices are? 
Five dollars for a fish sandwich. That's my crazy. God. <laughs> well, I have no idea what a fish sandwich costs because I haven't gone into a McDonald's in thirty years. Okay. I went a couple. A month, my brother picked me up a Big Mac and a something else a couple of weeks ago. He didn't tell me the price, but he says it's not like it used to be. He goes, meaning like it's expensive. Really, you can go to a diner. Well, it used to be. It was French cheap fries food. And a drink is twelve dollars. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but you remember yeah, when they twenty dollar burrito in San Jose. Come on in and get a uh, get a get a Big Mac for thirty nine cents. You remember those days? Oh, yeah. I used to, I used to always go to McDonald's with cheap food like that, I and mean, it was right by my house. I loved it. Yeah, <coughs> but I mean, it, I don't know for how cheap. That's it was. probably why you got some, such a big nose, Tony. That might be it. And the cancer. <laughs> I was eating those Big Macs. I knew these things were too good. Oh God! Oh, there's nothing like there's nothing like the old He's McDonald's never French fries. Shut up tonight. You know, you know the thing. The thing gets me upset lately is the the gas price. When Charlene agrees, again. you won't shut up. You know you don't. You are. He's just, right. Yeah. You know <laughs> That's true. She's <laughs> been quiet. She's been very good now, but then again, well, she had competition from Tony. <laughs> years years ago, when you first started, you told me when you went to this format, you know, on the Zoom, I had to behave myself. So well, I try to behave. Right. And you do, you know. Once I pointed out, you know. Uh, and we Brian love, having, we, we love <laughs> having you here. As opposed, oh, thank you. <laughs> as opposed to some, some other people. But anyway, um, so anyway, how is everything going with you, Kevin? I have you been posting any more bands online? Nah. Nah. Nope. They haven't asked me over there, so. Oh, okay. Well, that should be over with anyway, pretty soon, right? Mm -hmm. The yeah, they finished up percussion, so they're done with that. Yeah, it's pretty much done anyway. Yeah, how's everything up at your, how about, how's everything up at your daughter's uh, school? Uh, they're still in the negotiation stage, according to the last letter. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, they're still talking, but, but, they haven't, but they haven't, at least they're negotiating. They haven't had any uproar or anything like well, that. Well, at least they're negotiating. They're not calling in the cops. Yeah, no, I think they're all high up there. They just they don't care. They just want to sleep on their tents in the middle of the you, campus, you, and that's it. You know what gets me? I got to tell you, I'm watching watching television. I think it was yesterday, and uh, they, they had a bunch of people on complaining about what's going on at the universities and all the anti-Semitism this and the anti-Semitism that, and everybody who's talking has a cross around there. Their neck. I going, noticed that, why, Alex. Why right? you, I said, "Why don't you shut the fuck up? It's my it's my stake in the game here. <laughs> Let me say how I feel, right?" How, yes, uh, 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 Charlie. You know what the deal is? These evangelicals believe that it's necessary for the rapture for the Jews to be there, so the Jews can be destroyed by Jesus when he comes oh, back. Brother. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Work on yeah. that. I don't know. The President of the United <laughs> States spoke yesterday and said, stop all this anti-Semitism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, he had a cross around his neck. Probably. Yeah. He's yeah. a Catholic. <laughs> yeah, just just <laughs> shut up. Let, let us Jews sort it out for ourselves. You know? Only 100,000 Jews are supposed to survive the uh, rapture or whatever you call it. Really? I'm not going to get the, the I'm not going to get to fly up into the air? <laughs> no. That's 100,000. Away we go. Well, if, or I could sit down here while they all float away going, bye-bye, good riddance, see you later. Yeah. You know, have your yeah, little rapture if that's what you want. Yeah, you I want to stay here. <laughs> don't go. Yeah, yeah. But I don't understand any of it. it doesn't so, make Alex, did, me. did you listen to the president give that, the Jew presentation? The Jew pre presentation, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just, you know, and then I turn over to Fox to see their take on it, and they're saying, oh, it's about time he went out there and did something about anti-Semitism and so on, and I'm going, shut the fuck up. And they're all, so it's those women they have on, you know, uh, uh, all menstruating at the same time, you know, on uh, Fox at, at noon, and, and they've all got crosses around their neck. In fact, everybody's wearing crosses around their neck. Yeah, this day. I saw it sound they're wearing them outside, too, yeah. Yeah, what is that? Is it a whole new thing now? Yep. You know, is that that the, Laura Ingram always shows it too? Yeah. Well, just shut up. Don't if you're going to wear the cross and shut up about our <laughs> problems. All right. Yeah. You know, but I've decided yeah. I've made a. Uh, you're going to hate me for that. I've decided I'm really? not voting for for Biden. Really? Yeah. 
I just don't, I don't like his whole position on what's happening okay. with the universities. I don't like uh, until today, and maybe I changed my mind slightly because today he decided to stop sending money to Israel. It's a little late. Mm-hmm. But you're not going to vote for Trump, so that's all that matters. Yeah, no, I'm not going to vote for Trump. I, I can I can agree with you. I'm on that. voting for RFK. Any guy with a worm in his <laughs> brain. Is, <laughs> yeah. He's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. The only the candidate who really wants family. to kill Alex is him. <laughs> oh, by the right? way, by the way, and I'm no sports fan, as yeah. you know, right? No, a little bit, a little bit. The, uh, Netflix ran this roast for Tom. Oh, Brady. I watched it. Did you yeah. watch that thing? A little bit, my brother. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wasn't yeah. that one of the worst shows you've ever seen? I only like one guy. I don't know what who it was. He was ripping Jenna, the Jenna lady. I forgot who he yeah, was. Wait, 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 wait. You went no, uh, 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 Brian? Huh? But did you see it? No, no, no. I haven't seen it yet. I want to see it, but it's wasn't really it fun. Kim Kardashian got in trouble and uh, she went the short comedian, the black guy. What's his name? Kevin um, Hart. Kevin, Kevin Hart. Hart. Had to like shut her up, Kim Kardashian, because she said something or I don't know. She I said something and he got booed terribly, but then it's been edited out of the show. Oh, oh really? really? Yes. I didn't see the whole thing. The booing, the booing, not what she said. Um, mm. And uh, she thinks she's funny now. No, no, no. no. Here, here's the thing. No, no. It's 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 in to boo Kim Kardashian now. Mm. You know, she's gotten too rich, too popular, too famous, too this, too that. Her tits are too big. Her waist is her too big. Her is too big, you know, and everybody feels her now. Her waist is too skinny they now. Feel they feel like they should, should uh, go after her, you know, and that's wrong. And she laughs all the way or cries all the way to the bank like Liberace. Right. Right? I think she's a fairly accomplished woman, you know, and I, I think people should lay off of her. Uh, but, I like her. But I anyway, her. this this Tom Brady thing was just useless. I mean, uh, there was a, Nikki Glaser was the only comedian who was funny in that whole show, mm. and she was very good, you know. But the rest of the show was terrible. It was all these these football goons trying to do <laughs> jokes. Yeah, yeah. Lechak tried to be funny. Yeah, but where Godfrey wasn't there, that's why. Yeah, that's awesome. right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and then they bring this. Uh, what's his name? The the roast master guy. He, he thinks he's the big Jeff roast. Ross. Jeff Ross Jeff who Ross. thinks he's the big roast master guy, and he's really terrible. He's just talentless. Uh, and I never found him funny before he was the roast master. You know? How did he get that name? I was the neatest guy. He gave it to himself. Yeah, because he hoarded himself to every, every, every roast. roast that, and he he, 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 he he's Dean Martin with the Dean Martin, Martin yeah. roast. But you see, the, the roast started at the Friars Club. Were they that and, filthy and there, Alex? I was going to answer. Were they that filthy? You don't know how fryers. filthy they were. They were That's so. My, they were really? just really. Yes, they, but the tradition was. running water, Tony. What no. it was, you had a bunch of yeah. essentially male comedians okay. showing yeah. up to roast somebody, and because they were in their own private surroundings at their yeah. own private club, oh, wow, they yeah. just got filthier. I've gone to stuff at the Friday Really? Club. I would like to hear that. So filthy, it's wonderful. You know. That I would have liked to heard if they had it on uh, audio. No restraint. No restraint. No restraint. Wow. Yeah. Right. That, um, that's yes. good. Yeah. That I would have liked to hear. Oh, that's that's where Gilbert was missing. He never held back. Wow. Yes, that's right. Gil- he never held Gilbert back. Gilbert was the ultimate roaster. By the way, here is Don Giller. Don. <laughs> Let's roast him. <laughs> yes, that's you, Mr. Giller. How are you? Uh, I'm bored, so I thought I'd come here and be bored. <laughs> you got any ailments you can talk about? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to, um, I set up a CD in, in uh, last November uh, when the uh, rate was uh, 5.65%. Oh, mm-hmm. CD, yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. And uh, I'm making 15 bucks a day. Nice. Really? Wow. 12 months CD? Wow. And yeah. that was only uh, yeah. putting him I mean, putting in, and that was only him putting in a hundred dollars. <laughs> Are you good at that kind of stuff? No. No, not at all. Because I've <clears throat> never been able to be good with it. You know? To me, money is something you spend. You know? See me money is something you save because you don't know when you're not gonna have it when you need it. And then you die and you've never used it. 
Well, still, I'd rather not have used it. I'm sorry, Don. I got you beat. I just figured out what I'm making a day. I've never thought to think of it. $109 a day. So why are you making $109? <laughs> because I got money in savings and I got money in investments. And I just, I add it up and then divided it by 365 Well, it's only like, you know, $3,000 a month. Of course, I could be off by a dot and it could only be $10 a night. <laughs> yeah, it could be. It could Who knows? Be. I don't know. But uh, no, I just, I just, the thing is, I just always. I doubt thought, I'm making a hundred nine dollars a day. Yeah. Okay. So I, ha I've had a problem hmm. with with money all my life in that I just never cared. I mean, I made money, so I never cared about it. You <coughs> yes, know? you probably always used to make it. So always make more. Huh? You can always make you can more. Always make more. Always make more. Yeah. My you, my best you, friend and I. Yeah. Sorry, that was our same. Well, mm -hmm. unless you're in you're, prison and you're making money, that's pretty cool. Unless you get to be my age, mm -hmm. in which case you're not going to make any more money, you know. So you've mm -hmm. got to do something with your money. So that you would, you, if I knew, if you just knew when you were going to die, okay, you oh, could. Then, be, don't say that. Yeah, well, no, I'm saying you could spread yeah, your you money. Out. Time. I like Bubbles' way of doing yeah. it. What I know I would never want to. Day, know. but not the year. You knew the year, but not the day, or. No, what does Bubble say? If you're going to do you a joke. You know the day, but not if, the year. Oh, right. Yeah, if you're going to do yeah. a joke yeah. that somebody else does, <laughs> you should get it right before you attempt to say it. Yeah. Okay. That's why I said Bubbles. I, I don't know how he said it. He says, yeah, he says that. You, anyway. you would know the date, but you don't know the year. Right. I don't get to see Don Giller that much. Don, Don uh, suddenly pops up here. When I least I just, expect it. Too bad just, he doesn't live near you that you guys could like visit each other. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I just came for the Shecky money. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> Call it shekels. Yeah. yeah well, where, the where, do you, shekels where do you live, sure Don? Uh, across the street from Alex. Yeah, no, he oh. lives a couple blocks away. I don't know how many blocks. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm uh, let's see. He's in Harlem. Uh, one ten. I guess ten blocks. Maybe. Ten blocks. Oh, okay. But he never yeah. leaves the house. And then again, think think about it. Neither do I. So we, oh, yeah. you know, we uh, can... you'll, you'll thank me later. <laughs> 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 but I I find him one of the funniest people around. I love I love his sense of humor. Oh, you're the one, smart guy. Huh? Smart guy. Well, I won't say he's smart. But... Yeah, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I don't know him as well as you do. Smart ass, maybe. It comes from <laughs> somewhere else. So are you working on any interesting projects lately? Um, my sister was in town. She lives in New Mexico uh, mm -hmm. last week. And she played me, and then she subsequently sent me a video of our dad around a week before he died. He's in the... He... he he died at a hundred years old in like seven months. So wow. you know, he did okay. Mm -hmm. um, and this video is, is him in the hospital. Uh, a friend of his had a YouTube, uh, had, had on their iPhone a YouTube video of somebody singing Besame Mucho, which apparently was my dad's favorite song. And, and they've got the, let's see. Besame, besame mucho. Yeah. Da, 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 da. And, and, yeah. and and he has that they, they have the phone to his ear and he's singing along or if he's not singing, he's listening intently. Uh and I just found it really moving. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um and so what I, I wanna mm. put together I'm not quite sure yet what I wanna do with it. Um on his 100th birthday, which was in October of mm -hmm. 21, uh, 21, my sister was visiting him. We, we'd grow, grown up in Baltimore and, 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 and my parents moved to Miami in 71. So she's there mm -hmm. and she's capturing on the phone him playing on the organ, Besame Mucho. Ooh. And, wow. and mm -hmm. you know, at 100, it, he's not the quickest. But mm -hmm. but he's getting there, you know. He I mean he's, he knows the song and he's and he's struggling with it, but but he still gets through it. And 
uh, Sunday night, I uh, I dug out all of my reel to reels. Reel to reel video tape. Look at look at that. That's an oh, old reel to reel tape. And this what? and this is titled Daddy's Spanish Music. October 26, 1967. That's nice. And so I want to digitize it and and see if oh. he uh, he must have played that. I wish I needed stuff like that. And so I want to compare now, how he played it then versus how he played it when he was 100. Do you, do you have a tape player that will play tapes? Oh, yeah. like I was that. just going to ask him, do you have a reel to reel? Yeah, I've got a pretty good one. Um, it... it uh, uh, it, 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 it has three speeds, three and three quarters, seven and a half and 15. And it also has quarter track and half track. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I, I've been digitizing a whole bunch of stuff. I, I used to direct a choir in San Francisco, of 15th century music. And I, and I digitized a couple of masses that we had prefer, performed. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I don't know if any, any, any of you have heard of Cecil Taylor. Yeah. He was a jazz guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I had recorded a performance of his when he was at Antioch when I was a student in, in May, April of 71. Antioch, California? The college? College in uh, oh. Ohio. Oh, sorry. Um, and and I found it, so I, I want to digitize that and send that to, to Antioch. And, you know, it, it's mostly d digitizing a whole bunch of tapes that I've, that mm -hmm. I've had. And uh, I'd rather be doing this than, than uh, you know, uh, checking out my uh, uh, prostate. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you something. You know what's interesting? I was uh, I was looking. I now have uh, the ability to run tapes, mm -hmm. vid video tapes from many different formats because uh, I had one machine of this, and then my friend Steve he died and left a whole bunch of machines, and so I suddenly went through all the things that I've gone through. You know, you had you had. You had, uh, uh, I had reel to reel a videotape, right? Which I can't play now because I don't have anything to play it on. You mean cassettes, video cassettes? No, videotape, oh. reel to reel. Oh, Reels, really? videotape reel. Even I, even I know what that is, Alex. Sorry. Really? Yeah. You know. Are they are they, they ha half inch? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then uh, let's see here. Then I went to. Uh, um, VH, you know, VHS and so on. But I also, you forgot in the middle, there was three quarter inch cassettes that were used professionally. Okay. So, and I, but I don't have a machine for that, but I do for, do you remember super, or super high eight? Uh, I, I remember it. I never I, had I it. Mean, we can just go on and on with all the formats we've gone through in the last, you know, 30, 40 years. You have beta? I had uh, beta. I, I, had think, beta? I may have some beta tapes somewhere. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, um, I can, I can uh, play them. I have a beta machine, so I can, I could, uh, I could digitize. Uh, yeah, I, I could digitize that for you, but yeah. it would meet, it would require a meeting, so that could be a problem. Yeah, we would have to leave the house <laughs> yeah. to do that, and th that's kind of an impossibility. You should leave it by the oh. door. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave it by the door, and then you can pick it up, and then I'll go by your house, and you can leave it outside your door, and I'll pick it up. Yeah, yeah. as long as I don't have to go anywhere, I think we're okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, but anyway, so uh, you can see a lot of Don's stuff on YouTube. It's all over the place, and it's basically Letterman stuff. Uh, yeah, but, but I can't do that anymore, so I'm doing other stuff well you're not doing it anymore but you did so much of it initially that it's yeah. all there it's all up you know yeah you didn't have to take a lot of it off did you no i mean that's that's the deal they're keeping it up yeah i don't i don't have any real to real tapes but i have a real to real player mm -hmm. doll finger m 063h it's oh, supposed to be a really high-end machine but i don't have any real to real but i should send it to you alex if you Want to reel the reel? No, I don't. I really, I really <laughs> don't. It, 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 somebody, somebody said they're 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 going for about uh, twenty five thousand right now. Jeez, what's going for twenty five thousand? The machine that oh, I have okay. that I inherited. And what kind of machine is it? Bow finger B A L F I N G E R. The model is M zero six. But what kind of what kind of tape does it take? Oh, I don't know. I don't is, is it is it quarter inch tape 
you know, like commercial. I, I, I'll look. Hold on. This is one of the most exciting discussions. I'm not sure what it really looks show. like now. I don't think it's video play. Yeah. I wonder if it's large reels or small reels. Steve Fox uh, got to say something. Uh, I'm sorry. You know, it's, it's well, Steve, reel. you know about a lot of these formats. I mean, hell, oh, yeah. you're working in radio. I've been digitizing a lot of stuff, too, just like uh, Don down there. Um, and uh, it's, you know, getting it all together and sending it off to other people has been great. Well, the you fact know. is the fact is that you, you, you want to start digitizing this stuff. I started digitizing all my DVDs. So I can mm -hmm. have them in just you know files on the computer. Why? Why? They, as life has gone on, video has taken up less and less space for me. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I still can't bring. My, I have all the DVDs in the closet that I've already made copies of, and I it's can't get rid of the DVDs. I mean, I should throw them out, right? You, you can't know? get rid of them. Oh, well, no. I mean, I can't bring myself to get rid of them, even oh, though no. I digitized oh. all of them. They're good, yeah. You know. So, uh, so apparently sure it's a lot of uh, quarter and half inch mm -hmm. stereo. Both? Yeah, it'll play both, I guess. Is this audio or video? It's, two, it's actually built in Germany, so it's in millimeters. It's 2.75 millimeter and 5.25 millimeter. Do you know how boring this is getting? Yeah, can we let Charlene talk for a little bit? Yeah, this Charlene. Yeah. Please. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with you. Bro. Listen, losing people. Charlene, how are you doing? Is, it, is anyone um, watching that uh, Jim Belushi, uh, Belushi's Farm or something? What? You mm. should watch it. It's about cannabis. And uh, the Blues Brothers is going to have ice cream like uh, I just the Grateful saw, Dead, Ben and Jerry's. Oh, wow. I just know? saw a great show. It started a great show tonight. It's on Apple, TV, Apple Plus uh, mm. called Dark Matter. Oh, any good? I oh, it's sure. very good. It's well, very story. good. Yes, yes, and it promises to even be better. Mm -hmm. It's all about it's all about uh, you know it's all about other universes. It's you know within our universe. It stars Tony's proctologist. Ben, <laughs> Johnny, how are you doing? I oh, I, I think you've used up your joke. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, With uh, a joke? What? The uh, bingo card. I won bingo. Oh, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> bingo. <laughs> I can make coffee for a month. Yeah. I want to ask you. Yeah, I forgot what this sci fi channel wait, wait. called Dark Matter. What? There used to be a, a, a series on the sci fi channel called Dark Matter. Yeah, well, this That's isn't. I, I don't know if this is based on that at all, but it's called Dark Matter, and it's uh, very good. Very good. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Um, uh, who was saying? Don. Don. Oh, Don wanted to say something. Yeah, um, the moment's passed. Um, I want to ask, and forgive me, I forget your name, the, the, the voice, the voice of uh, Steve Fox. Yes. Oh, it's yeah, me. Steve, right. <laughs> what, what are you digitizing and for who? Uh, I've been doing a lot of reel to reels, cassettes, um, albums. Uh, oh, okay. You name it. I mean, all the formats I can actually do here. But not, not personal stuff of your own. Not yet. Well, I mean, hmm. you know, if you have tape, audio tape you want to digitize that as soon as possible yeah. because audio tape does not last forever you That's know, true. and if it's lasted this long you're lucky well knock on wood everything's okay i just yeah, got they, another the oxide player, so. get stripped from those after a while you know like mm -hmm. i had videotapes i had those reel-to-reel -reel videotapes and after oh i don't know 15 years, I couldn't play them on one of those reel-to-reel -reel, uh, video uh, machines because... You have to clean the heads? No, well, because the, the, there's a lubrication on those, those tapes that dries up, and then you can't get it to go around the helical scan heads. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it, it had a lot of problems that way, hmm. you know. I, I've had pretty good success. I had pretty good luck. Um, I'm I'm fi I'm finding stuff. I'm I used to uh, record uh, when I grew up in Baltimore. I listened to this radio station in Boston, WBZ, mm -hmm. and uh, and taped everything. Uh, <laughs> and so I've been digitizing that. I came across um, a demo, mm -hmm. of Tom Rush, uh, recording. Oh, I like uh, him. Birds for going. Yeah. Oh my God, it's wicked. Yeah. yeah. 
and this is this is before he recorded it on Electra, yeah. and it was played every night on uh, there. There's a, a DJ uh, name was Dick Summer. He did uh, oh, uh, Dick uh, Summer. I worked Dick with Dick Summer. Summer. Yeah. 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 Um, he worked from 11:30 until at night until 6 p.m. You know, every 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 day. Yeah. Uh, anyway, this was 1966, uh, and it came out great, and I and I uploaded it. So. Yeah. It came out fine. Yeah. Mm. It's uh, interesting. I actually have a cassette, Alex, of um, me calling into your show at KMEL back in 1982. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Did he hang I have up to on you? <laughs> at KMEL. Wow. Yeah. I don't, you know, I Hang don't, th- do I have anything from KMEL? I'm trying to remember. What, where is that? What city? This is in, in, in San Francisco. Do I have any tape from KMEL? I have a tape of my mother. I have uh, an interview with Mel Brooks. Oh, really? Uh, I have, a, but not that, not that much from KMEL. A lot more from mm-hmm. the Quake and then a lot more from KITS, everything we did every day we just put them on cassettes and i yeah. recorded every day so i have almost everything i did at kmel uh, at live 105 so did you make a request steve hmm? uh did i make a request no um there was some question he was asking and i, I gotta get he would have hung out. up on you <laughs> yeah he yeah. hung up on you i'm sure this is for don don did, did he don't say turn your radio you. down <laughs> yeah turn your radio down yeah, yeah, that was 68. Yep. Tony, yep. that's nice of you to send that to Don for free. I have it. <laughs> Alex, I, Alex, the stuff you have from Live 105, how do you have it categorized? By date? Do you have it by, like, who was there or anything? I just have it in boxes, and I haven't digitized them yet. You, no, do you know, a oh, uh, uh, hey, Charlene, you had something you want to say, and then I want to talk about Wait. digitizing cassettes. Yeah. I know, I'm sorry, but you're going to be going off soon, I notice, and I have a bunch of cassette tapes I made when I was a kid in grammar school of your WPLJ. Does either Mr. Geller or the other voice of Gabnet gentleman, are they interested in having them? Because no. I can't do all that stuff. <laughs> Nobody wants it. Oh, I'm like, what? I'll never Here, throw it out. Here's the terrible part. Here's the terrible part. Here's the terrible No, I'll just keep them there. Here's the ter- where, where are you? That I could try to- She's in New oh, Jersey. Oh, I'm in New Jersey, but I would send can't them or something. If you, if you can't get down to the corner, you're not getting to New Jersey. Okay. <laughs> but I, no, uh, All right. I, um, I, I, I would uh, ship it over there or something. Yeah, Go ahead. But anyway, I, um, uh, you know, I mean, but now I forgot what I was going to say. Digitizing uh, tapes. Oh, digitizing oh, tapes. Yeah. The trouble is, digitizing <laughs> tapes is hell uh, because it, you can only do it, you know, at it's real, real time. You do it real time. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, I wish there were a way that they could double the speed of that. You could double the speed of the recording, blah, 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 and then slow it down, and you got it right. But they haven't done that. It is hard. Well, actually, I, I'm doing that with with the uh, WBZ tapes. Really? Uh, there are three three quarters. I think I'm I'm, I'm digitizing them at 15. Uh, and I mean the yeah. quality's bad to begin with, so it's not going to matter much. And and then I uh, uh, software will. We'll slow it down, you know, right. to, to a manageable, you know, to a real. Yeah, yeah. Speed. But man, it, it, you know, that's it's not easy. So I, I haven't digitized a lot of that stuff, but I have the tapes. Anyway, hey, listen, I'm playing the theme because uh, we're running, uh, we're running towards the end of our show here. But this has been uh, absolutely agonizing, and I've uh, hated <laughs> every minute of it. So I, we must. My work do, is done. We must do it again, maybe in a year or two. Hey, hey uh, look at here's Adrian. Say hi, Adrian. Hi, baby. <laughs> oh, no. God. Say hi. She's You're sleeping? on the show. Hi. Is she weightless? She's a hologram. I can't turn her. She's no, going to turn There she again. is. So. There's, that's I his still daughter, have a phone. Adrian. Okay. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> did you call her? Did she call you? She just called me. Yeah. What uh, a good daughter. Uh, mm, hey, yes. thank you uh, very much uh, for your uh, participation in our show tonight, uh, Alan. And uh, Charlie, always a pleasure to have you here. Jeff, you've been perfect tonight. I didn't say the word. <laughs> <laughs> you said doctors. Jew earlier. Okay. Charlene, thank you so much. We love and thanks for the hat. I really appreciate it. Brian, you are great having you here. And and give give a big uh, Adrian a big kiss for all of us. Okay. 
Okay. Yes, right. <laughs> Kevin, thank you. Glad to have you here tonight. Uh, Tony, nice mm -hmm. having you. Uh, Steve, please call more often. We like having yeah. you here. You didn't get to say much, but then again, you had competition. Okay. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But I love being, you being here. And Don Giller, you, mm -hmm. you know you're welcome here anytime. With the shaky money. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you know, am I am I supposed to feel guilty about that? Because uh, you you will. I, well, you will. Well, you know, it's somebody I love dearly, and the only reason I got his money is because he died. You know, yeah. and I I hate that. You know, it happens to everybody. He should have given we it to me while he was alive for crying out loud. Uh, uh, anyway. Why well, you gotta decide yeah. the plan? What you're going to get rid of. Him. Hey, thanks, Don. You know it's That's wonderful. where we come in. Yeah, Don, it's wonderful <laughs> having you here. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye. I'll give a big wave goodbye at you and change to my camera. There we go. Okay, wait, what happened? Look at that. Oh, that's some really bad, uh, bad uh, green screen back there. See that? Oh, boy. Anyway, uh, she's next. Yes, Amy Manuel is next. And she'll be here with the intersection. So uh, taking your calls on Skype at uh, uh, GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.